So today we're going to be talking about 1971's A Clockwork Orange, directed by Stanley Kubrick. Now for those of you who don't know Stanley Kubrick, he's the one that also directed 2001 A Space Odyssey, The Shining, and Eyes Wide Shut, among other things. Now when this movie started, I thought my TV was acting funny because it just turns all red. And in the past I've had my TV act up in that exact same way. And I was a bit spooked. And then the credits came on and I thought, oh, I guess he wanted us to think that our TVs were messed up. That's good to know. And then the next thing I know, we have our main character and narrator, Alex, staring into my soul with this creepy glare. And he's just talking about how your humble narrator has a lot of things going on. And your humble narrator does all of this and all of that. And your humble narrator, he's a good guy just trying to make things work. Of course, he's, you know, a psychopath, but that's that's beside the point. So, this world that Stanley Kubrick sets up for, for all of these antics to happen, and apparently it's in Britain, and just in case if I didn't know, there's, you know, some pitch-perfect accents along with some pitch-perfect acting. But, anyhow... This this movie really starts off with a bang, um, many kinds of bangs, and him and his cronies just go around and beat the shit out of people and have their kicks and have their fun and bring around canes and wear a very odd noses. And they essentially wear, <laughs> they essentially wear underpants on top of their pants and, you know, defeating the entire purpose. But, you know, they're not about following the rules. So, after all of this hubbub happens, they, they finally come across this lady who has quite the urn, quite the phallic urn, and... Uh, Malcolm McDowell, who plays Alex here, in, ends up beating the bejesus out of her. And his cronies, they were a little mad because he had asserted a little too much power. He had said too much about how just how great he was. And so they let him suffer. And he was caught. And he got sentenced to some number of years, 14 years, in prison for the for the rape and murder of this woman. And you don't necessarily think Alex is a good guy, but you you do want to see him become a better person. And when he goes into jail and he starts making better decisions, you start to think, okay, well, maybe he can be, re be a reformed person. Maybe he can come back into society and be truly changed. And... Then he volunteers for this process, which essentially strips him of his free will to really make those bad choices and to always be good. But the real problem hap arises when he doesn't have the choice between right and wrong. And he's defenseless and helpless and weak. And everyone that he screwed over, of course, is right back there. To beat the shit out of him. And to really just lay it all out there. Uh, even his parents just don't care anymore. They rented out uh, Alex's old room to, to this new guy, Joe. And I guess they bitched and moaned to Joe. And Joe is not happy. And you can tell that the asinine factor just keeps creaking up and creaking up and creaking up. And while, while you don't necessarily defend Alex's actions, in fact, you think he's... A shitty human being, you know enough about what's going on that you kind of wish he had some choice to defend himself at least, to have some say. You know, is it is are you really making the right decision when you're not even making the decision? I think that's the big question that this movie asks. Now, I think what set this movie what sets this movie apart from pretty much anything else is its visual style. Um, this 
is very graphic. There's a lot of nudity in it. And whether or not that's your cup of tea, that's up to you. But that's just a fair warning. Um, I I guess I was a little bit surprised of just how much was there. But I wasn't offended or anything. I was just like, oh, this is where we're going with this. Okay. This is the kind of world we're in. All right. And I'm just trying to imagine watching this in 1971 when this movie was actually released. Because... Well, things were quite a bit different in 1971 than they are today. Granted, there are a number of things that run parallel to today, but so much has changed, um, especially with how much we've uh, allowed um, to be in our homes, especially with the internet, the advance of the internet, and all and all the plethora of things that have come about with it. Call it magazines, call it call it porn, call it whatever, you know, it's, it's been quite the ride, uh, moving from 1971 to now, and of course, I wasn't alive in 1971, but from what I can tell, um, things have really, have really changed, and what's, what's shocking then may not have been as shocking now, and this is a similar thing to when I saw Fatal Attraction the other day, it was quite shocking for its time, but now it's, it's seen as a bit more mediocre, um, on its own because the formula has been repeated so many times but that being said this formula has not been repeated very many times um there's a lot of exploitation films out there but i think the real difference with this one is just just what kind of style you're having captured and it also is ahead of its time in terms of try you know having a bit of empathy for the original bad guy. Now you don't necessarily want him to prosper and you know be the richest guy in the world or get the girl even though there really is no girl to get here but you at least want him to become something better and you don't really get that in this movie and that, it's a bit bittersweet um, and there were a lot of other things that were very very odd for example I really cannot hear the song singing in the rain I cannot hear that song the same ever again. Um, <laughs> this movie uh, leaves leaves quite a few prints in your brain and, and sears them in. Um, and he keeps calling Beethoven the the old Ludwig Ludwig von, and <laughs> and it ends up being that Ninth Symphony that ends up being a pain in his rear, and just. He just can't listen to it anymore. And I ended up drinking wine to this movie because, well, he drinks wine to this movie and he needed someone to cheers with. So I obliged. I said, why not? I'll cheers you, even though I know your wine is drugged. And sure enough, his wine was drugged because this is when he comes back to the house of the, wo of the woman that he just nonchalantly raped. And this is the exact scene of singing in the rain. And what's the song he's singing in the bathtub after all this time? That exact song. And he is just so out of it that he has no idea he's back at the exact same house. Now, I really couldn't imagine being that out of it to not know it's the exact same person, but to each their own, I guess. Now, some of the quotes I enjoyed from this movie include... Um, there is a place darker than any prisoner. Or, when a man cannot choose, he ceases to be a man. Now, this last one in particular really gets to the core of what's going on with this movie. Are, is Malcolm McDowell, is Alex, is he really choosing to be a good person? No, I mean, his, he's essentially had that choice stripped away from him to be bad. There's, there's really no wiggling back or so you think you know in the very end he ends up well well he ends up jumping out jumping out the window and all of his senses get restored and everything comes back to normal but I think I think the biggest thing about this is you know balancing out the criminal in the criminal instinct 
that we all that we all have, you know, whether it's very small or very large. Um, with the with the other part of our instincts that uh, make up our common senses, and yeah. So, like I said, some of the imagery, some of the wordplay that that really that really made this movie um, pole vaulted above above the rest that I've seen in quite some time. Now, you know, granted, it's very dark and very graphic, and you know, certainly not for not for kids, but um, I would say this movie was definitely a great watch, um, especially with the movie making itself and the directing and the positioning and the cinematography and the editing. Um, they actually had a really good usage of fast cam, albeit with one of the more gritty scenes. Um, and then, and seeing just, just what Alex goes through as a transformation um, for this procedure, because he signs up for this experimental procedure, and he's essentially seen all of these violent films, and it, it makes him sick inside, and it makes him hurt. And so whenever he sees violence again or he feels like being violent, you know, he's physically repulsed by it and can't take it anymore. And so that's it's quite interesting seeing this, you know, madman who has no rules and no boundaries, you know, be completely changed into someone that has virtually all the boundaries of the world around him. Um, and I was thinking that well, you know, how is he actually going to prosper at all in this? Is there going to be anything that he does and succeeds at? Well, you know, he jumps off the, you know, he jumps, he jumps out of the house and he tries to commit suicide. It doesn't work, but, you know, his senses get rewired. Things come back together and his instincts start to come back. And so... I think the biggest thing was that trying trying to balance out the the good and the bad, you know, and that you can't just take away you can't just take away the decision to be bad. That it doesn't really make you good, it just makes you weak. Now we've had discussions in society about whether or not, you know, the death penalty should be a thing, whether or not um, people really need to spend all of their time in prison, you know, what exactly do they need to do? And I, I think this goes a little bit into that, though it's much, it's much more on the artsy end of things. It doesn't necessarily want to answer those questions for you, but it wants to show you a very over-the-top way of how things could be. Now, I, I think that the biggest thing, let's see here, one of the last lines in this movie is, we always help our friends, don't we? But, of course, you know, how are we helping them? In this case, it's the government, because the government's the one that gave Alex this cure, this crime cure, and, well, they're wanting to have no bad press anymore, or, you know, as little bad press as possible, so they get him back to his normal senses, they blare the Beethoven again, but now he can handle it, and now he goes back to his madman ways, or does he, and I, normally I don't like when movies end on, on an ambiguous note, but in this case, I think it works because I want to know what happens next. I want to know where he's going to go. You know, is he going to, is he going to try to move back in with his parents again? Is he going to try and cause more crime again? Is he going to actually have a middle line, uh, a gray spot of his life? Is he, is he going to be touting that fence? As opposed to just writing one side of good or bad. I want to know. 
Now, in terms of the movie making here, I would say that it was top notch, like I like I said before, and I would give this movie an A. Originally, I had this as an A plus, and I ha even have the scores as an A plus, but I'm sticking with the A as opposed to A plus because I just because I feel that A plus is that is that realm of perfect and there's always room for improvement. And so the highest grade I'm going to be end up giving a movie is an A. And so that's why I have the ranking as an A.